Alright, welcome back to another episode of Cascadia Kayak Angler. Today I'm out on a really special lake called Coldwater Lake. It's a relatively young lake that was formed um, in 1980 after the north side of Mount St. Helens collapsed in mid-May during uh, its eruption. And all the debris and outflow from that uh, collapse of the north face of the mountain blocked off Coldwater Creek and formed a natural dam, which then created Coldwater Lake. Now the eruption killed most of the trout um, in the streams and there was no trout in the lake until the late 1980s, early 1990s when WDFW planted rainbow trout. But since that time uh, they haven't planted anymore and the trout naturally reproduce so these are essentially a wild trout population that's established itself here and uh, it's managed. Uh, as a trophy trout fishery. So you're only allowed to retain one fish over 16 inches per day and you can only use single point barbless hooks, no bait. But what really makes this lake really special for the kayak angler is that uh, the lake is restricted to boats or water vessels without uh, combustion engines. So it's the perfect lake for the kayak angler to get out. Um, it's a relatively long lake. It's over three miles in length. And it's very popular with float tube fishermen and also fishermen using electric trolling motors. But they have a limited range. Kayak anglers, we can go all day with our muscles. And we can get down and fish other parts of the lake that other anglers can't access and spend a, a good amount of time there. So it's a really great place to come check out. It's really special, it's a beautiful place to be. Uh, there's lots of wildlife, gorgeous scenery to see. So I encourage you to come out and uh, check out this fishery. So today I'm gonna try trolling a variety of gear. There's a lot of different techniques that you can use to connect the trout here. You could cast fly rod around uh, the stream inlets coming into the lake. And a lot of guys seem to do fairly well floating a small chironomid fly underneath a strike indicator. Um, you could cast spinners at the bank. Um, again, concentrating those rare areas around the inflows seems to be a, a pretty good technique. Or you can just do like I'm doing today and just troll um, a variety of lures. I'm using um, small spinners, small flatfish, and uh, I may even use a combination of a uh, small dodger and a woolly bugger fly uh, trailed behind it. Just remember that all the lures need to be uh, single point and the barb needs to be pinched. So I typically uh, like to, when I'm trolling for trout, I like to have my gear somewhere between uh, 50 and 75 feet behind the boat. and. I do uh, put some weight on there sometimes to get it down, especially uh, later in the day when the sun hits the water, it might drive the fish a little deeper. Um, but just use uh, visual cues to help you determine what the fish are doing. If you see them feeding on top, um, it's probably okay to keep your gear up on top. My troll speed, I like to keep it between one and a half and two miles per hour when I'm trolling for trout. Um, you can go a little slower if the water temperature is colder. The US Forest Service currently maintains a ramp on the south end of the lake. You'll need a Northwest Forest Pass or Interagency Pass, or you can pay an $8 launch and day use fee. 
To learn more about opportunities to connect with, understand, and recreate in this amazing landscape, I encourage you to visit the Mount St. Helens Institute website, and I will post the link in the comments below. As always, have a great and safe time out on the water.